Okay, understanding the Russian response. What is the Russian response? Two parts. First is they took Crimea and they're not giving it back. Crimea is gone. Second is what they're doing is not trying to conquer Ukraine. There are many people who say the Russians are going to go on a rampage, they're going to try and reestablish the Soviet Union or a greater Russia, uh, and so forth and so on. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, Putin is much too smart for that. You remember what happened when the Russians invaded Afghanistan? You remember what happened when we invaded Afghanistan? You remember what happened when we invaded, invaded Iraq? You remember what happened when the Israelis invaded southern Lebanon? You want to stay out of these places. In fact, if you really want to wreck Russia, what you should do is encourage it to try and conquer Ukraine. Putin, again, is much too smart to do that. What Putin is doing is he's basically in the process of wrecking Ukraine, and he's telling the West in very simple terms, you have two choices. You either back off, right, and we go back to the status quo ante before February 22nd, 2014, where Ukraine is a buffer state, or you continue to play these games where you try and take Ukraine and make it a Western bastion on our doorstep, in which case we'll wreck the country. And they are, of course, now in the process of wrecking it. Right? And they're going to keep this conflict going for as long as they have to. That's the basic game here. Again, two steps. One, took Crimea. No way they're going to ever let Crimea become a NATO base. And remember, the name of the game here is to make Ukraine part of NATO. Not happening and they're not getting Crimea. We've taken Crimea, we're keeping it, number one. And number two, you want a frozen conflict or you want to wreck Ukraine so that it can't become part of the West. Question number two here is what motivates this? What motivates this is that Russia is a great power and it has absolutely no interest in allowing the United States and its allies to take a big piece of real estate of great strategic importance on its western border and incorporate it into the West. This should be hardly surprising to the United States of America. As all of you know, we have a Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine basically says that the Western Hemisphere is our backyard and nobody from a distant region is allowed to move military forces into the Western Hemisphere. I can tell from looking at the audience that most of you are old enough to remember the Cuban Missile Crisis like I am. You remember how we went stark raving crazy at the idea of the Soviets putting military forces in Cuba? This is unacceptable. Nobody puts military forces in the Western Hemisphere. That's what the Monroe Doctrine is all about. Can you imagine 20 years from now a powerful China forming a military alliance with Canada and Mexico and moving Chinese military forces onto Canadian? and Mexican soil, and us just standing there and saying, this is no problem. We're all 20th, 21st century people, and worrying about Chinese forces there is what 19th century people like Vladimir Putin worry about. Of course that's not going to happen. We're going to maintain the Monroe Doctrine with regard to China just as we did with the Soviet Union during the Cold War. So nobody should be surprised that the Russians we're apoplectic about the idea of us putting Ukraine on the western side of the ledger. And by the way, they told us, I gave you the quotes, in the wake of the Bucharest summit. I told you what happened in August 2008 with the Georgia war. The precedents were there. The rhetoric was there. They told us. But we did not stop our efforts to make Ukraine, part of the West. And the Russians responded. Was it surprising? For some reason, President Obama and virtually all of the elites in the West were surprised. I guess this is because they're 21st century people, right? And they think that balance of power politics doesn't matter anymore. If you think these people in Washington and most Americans are having trouble dealing with the Russians, you, you can't believe how much trouble we're going to have with the Chinese. I'm very popular in China. I go to China quite often. Uh, and I usually start my talks by saying, it's good to be back among my people. Because when I'm in China, I'm intellectually much more at home there than I am in Washington. Because in Beijing, much like in Moscow, you're dealing with 19th century people like me. Whereas in Washington, you're dealing with 21st century people. I think the Chinese are going to eat our lunch. 
talk about the conventional wisdom. 